everybody. Welcome to Digging with Doug. I'm Doug Oster from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. And before we get started, I want to show you one of the reasons that I hate winter. It's right behind me. It's that driveway there. And through this switchback, that's a quarter mile long that you have to keep snow off of all winter long. Luckily, no snow problems yet. But right here at the switchback, this wonderful plant. This is flowering kale. And I'll tell you, I've fallen in love with it. This time of the year, it's just about all the color we have in the garden, and it's a cool December morning. We had a freeze last night, but this plant could stay here for who knows how long, you know, at least another month, and it's just wonderful. I've used it other places up in the landscape, but today we're, we're all about tools, and that's what we're gonna be working on. Basically done gardening for the most part, so we're gonna get our tools in shape for next season. I'm always talking about using my grandparents' tools, and I wanna keep them as nice as I can. Let's head up to the tool shed, and I'll show you how we do that. Well, as I said, I use a lot of my grandparents' tools for as long as they last. Actually, when they can no longer be used, they get planted out in the garden as uh, pieces of art. Uh, and we want to keep these in the best shape possible. These handles, these old handles, you'll never duplicate the wonderful wood uh, that they used back in the 30s. So the first thing we're going to work on is the metal part, and we want to keep it sharp. I I've used this several times before on this show. Uh, it's called AccuSharp. Uh, there are, if you can't find this specific tool, there's plenty of them out there at any hardware store. And it just runs around the outside of the sharp part. You could also use something else I brought here. You could use a file to file a nice edge on here. Sharp tool is important. Uh, this, this, we used this shovel or the spade uh, earlier in the series to move a, a big azalea plant there. So we want to keep, get it sharp. Then after that, we're just going to put a little bit of regular motor oil on the metal parts just to try and keep the rust off. Of course, we want to keep these tools inside, in the tool shed. Don't leave them out in the garden. I have a habit of doing that, even though, even though they're my grandparents' tools. I, I don't take as good a care as I, as I should. But yeah, coating this with, a, with just a light coat of oil will prohibit uh, the rust. All right, well, there's the metal part. Just a light coating. It looks better, too. Now, for the wooden handle, we'll change rags, get rid of this oil. And on the wooden handle, we're just going to put boiled linseed oil on there. It's funny, one time I was at a, a garden group, and I said, put boiled linseed oil on the the wooden parts of your tools and a guy asked me how long do you boil it for no it just comes as boiled linseed oil and what happens with the handles is they dry out over time and so this will uh will stop that from happening and add some moisture to the wood make it last a little longer so we'll just put a little bit of this boiled linseed oil on this rag and rub it into the wood And we'll do this a couple times because that wood will absorb this oil. And we want to get it so that it does soak in there. Actually, I love the smell of this linseed oil. I'm sure a lot of people don't, but I'm used to, I guess it's the smell of spring for me because you'll still smell this when you get the shovel out in the spring. Well, we'll let that soak in. And then we'll probably put two or three more coats on there uh, just to preserve it the best we can. Now, before I go, I've got to show you a plant that's blooming right now. It's just wonderful to see flowers blooming when it's this cold out, and it is cold out. <laughs> so how about these? This is the Christmas rose. Uh, that's a common name. It's a hellebore, and it's blooming right now when everything else has ended. Uh, it starts off with this beautiful white flower with a yellow center and then fades to pink. It's, it's just a wonderful plant to have in the garden. It's something you should think about when you're planting your perennial bed for next spring. Now remember, if you've got questions about what we were doing today, log on to www.post-gazette.com slash homes and click on the gardening forum button. Uh, we're talking about gardening there, talking about what we're doing here. Also, that's a place where you can see past videos from Digging with Doug. Also, you can read my blog and see other videos at the PG members only site called PG Plus. Now, I want to leave you with these beautiful flowering kale out front by the greenhouse. Until then, we're just about done in the garden.
Here it's combined with bamboo. All these plants should be able to stay out here most of the winter. The bamboo certainly can. The first time I ever saw these it was at a nursery and these plants were probably three times that size. That's what I'm going to shoot for next year is planting them earlier in the season and letting them go all season. I think they'll last longer. This is combined with Dusty Miller, another plant that sometimes can winter over. Actually, the wonderful thing about Dusty Miller is that if it does winter over, the next season it has beautiful yellow flowers that most people don't see.